Uh, okay. Um, I don't know why we can't get our act together two meetings in a row, but we're almost done. Um, the board office forgot to send out a reminder today, and I don't know if that affected other people, but uh, uh, it, it is something that usually does occur. Um, so um, just to sort of uh, get back into what we have to do before, I guess by 15 days or two weeks before June 29th, which is the June board meeting. Um, right now, we had been scheduled for two additional meetings in addition to this evening in case we needed them. Um, because we completed our interviews and had nothing more to do other than I think vote and discuss a report, right. um, I, I acceded to the board office's request that we give up June 6th so that um, the special committee on uh, racial equity scree uh, could meet on June 6th. So right now um, you can scratch out June 6th on your calendar. We have been uh, scheduled to meet at seven. Um, so that's the first scheduling point. The June 8th meeting, you may recall, we discussed this in previous meetings. We've agreed to start at six um, so that another committee, Julia's committee can meet without creating a conflict for her. So the youth committee. So June 8th, we start at six and we'll know by the end of this meeting, I think, um, whether we need to meet at all on June 8th. The reason I wanna keep that open is that if something occurs between now and the 8th that requires the committee to meet. We're just talking about a week. I'd like that to still be sort of, you know, on the schedule for open meetings purposes. So we'll cancel it before the meeting if need be. But I'd like to keep that open for now. Um, I think Moses, you're the only one who had a question about that in terms of your schedule with regard to getting back from work. And I think you indicated that for whatever business we needed to transact, you would be able to join by phone. Is that right? That is correct, yeah. Okay, great. By the way, can everybody hear me okay using my phone for audio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's perfectly, perfectly yeah. safe. Well, okay, great. Um, Steve, uh, Omar has his hand raised. Hi, Omar. Hi, yeah, I only have a question. Um, is there time for people to apply for positions? I, I you know, the committee can sort of do whatever they want, but, um, we should we should discuss that um, because uh, I mean the bottom line is that we already extended the date once and that was weeks ago. I don't have offhand the the deadline that was set, but it was in May, and we only have this one meeting left. So what we would have to do if we wanted to open things up, I, I thought about this uh, today. If we wanted to open things up, we'd have to send out a notice tomorrow. We'd have to set a deadline for like, let's say Wednesday of next week for people to notify us. We'd have to schedule interviews, discuss and hold a vote all within 60 minutes on June 8th. So I would say that given that we don't have any other meeting time that we should not, because I don't see how we could functionally do it at this point. Yeah, I think I agree with that, especially because we, you know, we've we've had there's been ample opportunity for folks to, to to apply. So I think at this point, we're probably not enticing anyone sort of just nomination on the floor. Right. So what I would just say is if anyone is interested that while the nominating committee may not have the capacity to do the interviews and everything to encourage people to nominate themselves or others from the floor because we do have three chair positions that are not filled so i don't want people to feel like because they can't meet with us they can't run we have a mechanism for that but um at this point it is a little late in the game to go through the formal process but we do have the other process of the nominations from the floor yeah every every communication we've sent out has had a paragraph in there explaining that this is just the nomination process and that people can nominate from the floor and that this is not exclusive. Let me read you what I would write in the report for our slate, you know, right before we print the slate up. 
Um, although we recommend for election those individuals listed on the slate of nominated candidates below, we emphasize that it is the role of the nominating committee only to recommend and that it is up to the full board by their votes at the June meeting to decide. Please note also that additional candidates for any position may be nominated from the floor at the June meeting. That's what I wrote in a report in, in 2020, and that's what I would propose to write this time. So I, I think it's really at this point we're so close to the election from the floor, Omar, that I think that, I mean, but who, do you have someone in mind who you want to allow to go through the committee process or would it be, is it sufficient? Are they committed to run from the floor? Um, even after they come, it would still be open to the floor. I just wanted more time to see if someone would run for a committee chair position, you know? So. But do you have someone who says who's informed you that they would they want to be considered by the committee for a nomination for it, a, a committee chair position? They didn't give me a definite answer. They just said they were thinking about it. So well, yeah. I mean, we're, I don't. If it's if I encourage them, and I think you should continue to urge them to pursue it. But we couldn't possibly open the process now even if we turn somersaults for someone who hasn't decided. I think there's also a difference between someone who is considering for a non-contested position versus someone who is being, like if someone wants to run for chair of the board where there's already someone that we've met with. Um, Sylvia's in the waiting room, I'm gonna admit her now. Um, I think that's slightly different. If someone is like, I'm thinking about running for aging and there's no one else running, you know, maybe we could stand on our head and do that. But if someone wanted to run for chair, or vice chair, or someone who's seeking re-election, I think that would be a little more complicated. Yeah, or to be honest, Julia, really vice versa. Because if someone's running for, if someone wants to be chair of aging, for example, if someone wants to step forward for that and there hasn't been interest in it, then the committee's recommendation of the person means very little. If, however, someone were to put their want to put their hat in for chair of the board and or any other committee which or any other position, then I think at least the nominating committee would be performing a, a stronger function in actually deliberating about who we think should be nominated. So in that sense, I'd almost rather turn a somersault for that situation than one in which, you know, there hasn't been interest. But in any event, Omar, I think what we have here is uh, it, there isn't anything firm. I would probably recommend against reopening anyway. We would, however, I believe, have to reopen for every position. That's not a bad thing. Usually, it's a bad thing on June 1st. <laughs> um, so I, I think that unless there's a strong view otherwise, I, I think that we should just proceed with normal business. And I know Omar, I just, I urge you to continue to urge whoever has expressed interest to you, um, you know, in continuing and, and just be nominated from the floor at the June meeting. And it's likely that there won't be a contest, right, based on our experience. Okay. Um, has anyone else done any outreach? I have not. I, I exhausted my outreach uh, when we, before the meeting, before the meeting last. Um, and I know Omar was going to do more before the last meeting, but has anyone else been successful with any outreach? I admit I have not, but I have often thought about what Julie said about calling every member of the board. And I was like, you know what? In future, uh, committees that might be something people do um because it is important to have chairs yeah yeah um a lot of people have been contacted even if i've only contacted five or six other people before the committee even met my understanding is that you know the current officers take an interest in making sure that committees are led so i think that there's a sort of an always sort of a, a drumbeat especially for committees like aging that became open before the nominating committee was even elected. But um, so, okay. Anybody else with any outreach that we should know about? No, not, 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 
No. Chris, Omar, Moses, have you had any changes of heart? <laughs> <laughs> None here. No. Unfortunately not. No. Personally? Uh, <laughs> individually? <laughs> um, okay. Um, so I, I think at this point, and I realize there may be less to discuss this year than on, in some other years, um, but um, should we move on to discussion of the candidates? If any, yes. Whether it was whether it be candidates that we interviewed, of whom there were five, uh -huh. we interviewed we interviewed three candidates because they took office after the last nominating committee met, so had not technically been interviewed for their position, and that was uh, Scott Crop Crompinger. Um, Margaret Della for secretary, Scott Crompinger for, tre for treasurer, and Deb Travis for parks committee. And then mm -hmm. we interviewed Julie Reyes and Sergio Villaverde for board chair and board vice chair, respectively, um, you know, who are new to the, would be new to those positions, in, you know, in compliance with the uh, ethical guidance manual. So any discussion of the candidates that we interviewed, and then we'll move on to those we have not. Not discussion, but more of a question. Um, do we say yep. something about like candidates who have, who are ready to step forward in advance? Like, should we say something about the folks who went through this process versus folks who maybe were not ready at, for the last, what is it, two months now? Or, um, who, let's say someone else wants to run for board chair, like they didn't give us that opportunity. Like, is there some kind of uh, distinction we should make? So uh, not, I'm wondering if, not if that just happens by, they're not, our, we, we're making a recommendation, recommendation. For example, if we recommend Sergio for vice chair, then that, that's what the nom com nominating committee says of the person we think. So if someone else runs, they can still run, but you know they don't have the recommendation of the nominating committee. So that maybe kind of help by de facto covers that. Right? I'm sorry, I would like to follow. Up. I appreciate that. It's it's like if someone to Omar's question, if someone's like, okay, well on June fifteenth, they're like, well I'd like to be considered. It's like, well, uh, um. You know, you had a month and a half to think about this, and that's great. I appreciate that you came to this or what have you, but uh, Julie Reyes went through the entire process. I think we just lost Chris, um, but Julie Reyes went through the process and met with us, and I think that there should be um, some weight added to that, or is that inappropriate? Well, Julia, the thing that I don't understand is that we don't have anyone who didn't go through the process, but who has come to us. No, I'm saying if something happens between today and June 29th at the board meeting, like not from the floor, but in the interim to Omar's then point. There can't, be, no, there can't be anything. There can't be anything that happens after tonight. If we vote on a slate tonight, uh -huh. it wouldn't matter. In fact, whether we do anything tonight or, or not, or not, Whatever the last deadline was, remember we had a second round where anyone could submit interest for any position and that deadline passed. Once that deadline passes, it's like they can knock on the door of the committee, but the committee isn't receiving any names. It wouldn't matter if they, if they, if they notified an individual committee member or the entire nominating committee or the board office, they would simply not receive any consideration unless we reopened the entire process for all positions because otherwise it wouldn't be fair. And the point is they are no longer, the process of the nominating committee becomes inaccessible once a deadline is passed. In this case, the extended second deadline. So it's possible for the nominating committee to open the process again. That's happened before, never this late, but it's happened. But without there being another open period, there is no such thing as someone who comes late. 
everything just immediately defaults to the election day. What you described as nominations from the pool. Okay. I mean, apart from what Moses said, which is the committee is literally recommending person X for a position. So if person Y comes up at the floor to contest, right, for the first time, or goes to the committee on June 15th after its report is submitted, it doesn't matter. The committee doesn't speak at the meeting. They have spoken through their slate. We have spoken through our slate. So here you have a recommended candidate for position X and then a new candidate for position X. No problem. People are allowed to do that, but they don't have the nomination of the nominating committee. That's the reason for the nominating committee. So it's, I forget the word Bose's used, but that's, that's the point. Is there a mechanism for us to, you know, I mean, people get nominated from the floor for a number of reasons, right? Like they weren't ready, they weren't sure, they whatever, but is there something to say like, you know, if they run against a contested position, like while this may be a great candidate, they like, can we ask them the same questions or like, is there a role for us from the floor? No, absolutely not. But just under the bylaws and the EGM, we're not supposed to put our fingers on the scale after we file our report and the report is due two weeks before the election. We um, have absolutely no just, role after that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got a question. So basically at the June board meeting, this report will, will be presented, right? And then we, are got, we can open up the floor for nominations from the floor. This is all, right, yes? We don't, don't do that's any. That's, I'm sorry, Steve. I don't think that's us. I think that's the bylaws and that people who want to be nominated from the floor who weren't ready, didn't want to go through this process, whatever their motivation was, once they get nominated from the floor, I believe from what Steve just said, we are out. We don't, we no longer get a say in what happens there. I would have to go back and check, but my, under, my recollection is that these reports the report of the nominating committee goes out, like in this case, June 14th, June 15th. That goes to the full board. That's the way of the board knowing who's actually, you know, what spots. And that gives people two weeks to consider, hey, you know, maybe I do want to be nominated. Uh, you know, I, I do want to run from the floor. And then, you know, if it's a contested position, people will make probably make short speeches at the meeting that's happened in the past. But that's that's a process which is run by the current board chair. That's not a process that we run at all. I mean, I or one of us might stand up officially saying the nominating committee met five times, interviewed five people, issued our report on such and such date, and then sit down or reference a part of the report that recommends a change in the text of the EGM or something. But our slate is, is out two weeks before the meeting and that's it under the bylaws. Got it. Yep. Um, I actually, uh, there is another open spot, actually, the, uh, I believe now uh, environment and sanitation is, in, is, is another open spot. It's an unusual year. I've never seen it in my dozen years on the yes. board, huh? um, but that is what it is. Um, so is there any discussion of individual candidates starting with those we interviewed for no other reason than to try to separate them up in your mind? But um, or any candidate at all for any position, any discussion.
No, it's no real discussion, but I think for me, for me, but I will say that I, I am glad we asked the questions we did, especially of the candidates going for chair and vice chair. I'm hoping that, you know, the questions themselves will uh, remind folks of the importance of civility. And so I think that I'm hoping that comes that is, you know, remembered um, when uh, folks are considering what it means to actually take on these roles. So um, I'm glad we, have, we were able to have those discussions. Agreed. I concur with that. Also to say that um, generally speaking, everyone interviewed well. Uh, most of the candidates, uh, actually I like, did most of the talking. So uh, each of us was able to uh, cut some of the questions off our list, which was furnished to us. But um, I also, with the civility and also the, um, talking about quorums and attendance and how would that be addressed <laughs> a nice uh, addendum that we put in there as well. You know, your comments actually remind me of something that we didn't ask about and that I think um, maybe, maybe might be worth putting in, in the report. Um, I'm not sure exactly how, but you know, given the, the number of open spots, and by open, I know you all understand, I mean, that no one's expressed an interest in uh, being nominated for. I think one of the things that the board should think about more than perhaps more than they already do, and maybe maybe they already do, but is mentorship. And for want of a better word, you know, bringing people along, grooming has a bad connotation today. Um, but, you know, Identifying people early on who might be prepared to take on more responsibility and instead of letting it get to be, you know, May 12th and scrambling around. Now, by saying that, I don't mean to suggest that, as I said earlier, that isn't happening during the year anyway. But I think maybe if I had it to do over again, I might have added a question to our list. And that would have been about. How would you, you know, speaking to a board chair or any committee chair, how would you identify and mentor members of the board or members of the committee with an eye toward their taking on the responsibility of an officer or committee chair position in the future? What would your plan be? That's what I would ask. I would add that to the questions. I agree. I would say also with a special focus on the fact that term limits are coming up and it's the first time we've had to encounter this and that I do believe close to half of the board is going to be termed out at one time and so like what are we doing about mentorship or recruitment or what have you in terms of we've got let's say 30, maybe more or less. Um, there is a 929 number that wants to come into the meeting. I'm going to admit them, but we should probably ask who they are. Um, but I think that we should definitely ask about that because we could potentially lose a lot of institutional knowledge or people who are brand new and there's no sense in reinventing the wheel when we have things for that, but have we taught people or have brought people along who are newer to the board to how we do things or what we've already done or why we do things the way we do? Yeah, that's a great point. Well, if people are okay with it, I will, I will put that in the report as something for the board to consider going forward um, for the reason that you said, Julia, and because there are five open spots. Um, excuse me, a uh, phone ending in 6566. Uh, could you please identify yourself? And they're and gone. They're yeah, <laughs> okay. All right. I didn't think um, that was a scary <laughs> question, but maybe. No, no. <laughs> that was the, I'm sorry, I forgot to do it. Thank you. <laughs> 
Um, any other discussion or discussion of including discussion of individual uh, candidates? Including the people who did not interview because we didn't require it and they didn't request it, which would be what some people sometimes refer to as incumbents. I would just say the same thing is that we've got a lot of incumbents, including myself, who maybe I'm not sure when the term limits apply, but we've got a lot of people who are close to being termed out. And what are we doing to make sure that if half the board turns over that CB8 is still able to do the great work that we've always done? Um, when some of us are not here, I, we don't have a consultant kind of mechanism. And even our board office is a little, I mean, Julie Reyes and Sergio Villaverde and even Margaret and everyone else has been on the board for a few years now. What, what happens, yeah. we all term out, what, what are we doing to prepare the board for that knowledge loss? So. So one thing, yeah, Julie, I would agree. Just one thing to note, I, I think we do have some uh, on runway here. My understanding of the of the law was that starting in 2019, you have an eight year term limit. And so it doesn't matter how long you did before that. None of that matters. It's like only started fresh after the law came into effect. There's an eight year term limit or four two year term. So, so, so no matter how long you've been there before. So I think you, we still, you would have until yeah, what are four, four two year term limits? Um, so. Right. So it would be in, technically, according to that, thank you, Moses, that would yep. be 2027, which is right. about three, four years from now. So I think, you know, again, it's, it, it, it will not be a crisis. What you're saying, properly so, is that it won't be a crisis tomorrow or in October. But it could well be a crisis in three years if the planning and the is not done. And I think that what, unless someone's done it behind the scenes and I don't know about it, I think step one is to identify people's term limit date and see what positions they occupy. Some of these chairs have served for a long, long time and, 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 you know, take steps to try to cover and bring people along. So I, I am going to devote, a paragraph, I think, of the report to that. I would like to. I think it's a great point. And with all due respect, um, the two positions that I think of who are called on the most are land use and law, rules, and ethics. And I do believe that. Sorry, my sister called. My sentence. <laughs> I do think that Mr. Merdler and. Um, my brain is not working tonight. I apologize. It's Marty, very Marty, well done. Marty. Yeah, no, no, that, that's right. There's a lot of institutional knowledge. Yep. That we are going to lose. And I really want to strongly encourage them to, because I believe that Marty is Chuck's vice chair. So it's not like, again, right. I've had a few vice chairs who have left and I was really looking to step away. But I haven't been able to do that. Um, but I don't know that all chairs are thinking about that. And, you know, to your point, Moses, like six years, four years feels like a long time, but it's really not when you're trying to get somebody up to speed of like how we've done things for 30 years. Yeah, no, I mean, I think a few years is certainly enough time. It's just a question of getting started and being aware of it, which is what I think we, I think it's worth sounding that alarm. So it's a good point. Um, any other discussion of other issues? Um, and for that matter, anything else that people would like to see in the report besides just, you know, the committee met five times, interviewed five people, and here's our slate. And this is our recommendation for the EGM, which I'll go over, but we talked about two, two meetings ago. Uh, okay, so I think uh, in accordance with our duties, we should vote. Um, and what I'd, what I'd like to do is, I don't think we have any contested positions, but for just for good order, I'd like to go through the uh, people who have submitted their names for consideration <clears throat> by the committee for nomination and uh, take a vote. And, you know, your vote can be uh, I, uh, 
yeah, what is it? Yay, nay, or abstain. So just taking it from the top of the list we circulated with respect to informing people about incumbents, interests, and intentions. Um, the first position is chair. Laura has said she's not running for a third, fourth term. And uh, Julia Reyes has submitted her name and we interviewed her. And uh, all those in favor of placing Julie's name uh, on, on the list of nominated candidates by the nomination committee? Aye. Um, Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Is that everybody? It is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this will start to seem a bit tedious, so I'll, <laughs> I'll shorten the introduction. Um, for Vice Chair Sergio Villaverde, um, has submitted his name. Bob Bender is not running again. Um, and no, no one else has submitted their name. Uh, all those in favor of including Sergio on our recommended slate, um, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, Margaret Della is already serving as secretary and has indicated a wish to continue. Um, uh, all those in favor of Margaret Della being on the list of our slate of nominees, uh, please uh, say aye. 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 Any, uh, any nays? Okay, I heard four ayes. Um, Chris, did you vote? Yes, I did. Here's another eye from SoFlo. Okay. Um, Scott Croffinger, um, currently serving as treasurer, um, appointed late in the year or elected late in the year, has indicated his wish to be nominated for the position and to continue in that position. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, and for the aging committee, no one has stepped forward. So the, the slate will, rec will reflect that. Um, I think um, I, th I would be interested in people's views on this. I would, I'm thinking that it would say next to the position, um, maybe just nothing. Yeah. Because no nomination could imply that we received someone's interest but didn't oh, want see. to move forward with them. So I'm thinking just leave it behind. What do people think about that? Or maybe say that nothing to consider, like we haven't had anyone to evaluate. Okay. So like no candidate has been considered or no? That's a, oh. I just think to okay. Steve's yeah. point, it should be clear that it's not that we're voting against anyone it's that no right. one right. there was no one for us to consider right no one stepped right. forward okay i think i'll use an asterisk and then have an explanation <clears throat> no candidate is in, has indicated um or no board member has indicated in, an interest in being considered for nomination to whatever the whatever the uh, preposition is to this position. Okay, um, so that would apply to aging. And then for budget, David Gelman is currently serving as budget chair and has indicated an interest in being nominated to continue. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yep, I Chris, said it's I. only work. I'm sorry. Do you have a? So we have four I votes. Uh, Chris, your vote. I. Sorry, I'm getting uh, hung up here a little bit. I. Okay. Um, Sylvia Alexander, again an incumbent, has served in the position. Currently serves. Has asked uh, to be nominated to continue in the position. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. 
environment and sanitation, health hospitals, and housing all receive an asterisk unless someone knows otherwise, <laughs> unless I miss something. Chuck Merdler has indicated an interest in continuing as land use chair. Uh, he's asked the committee to, for their nomination of him to do so. All those in favor say aye. 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 So this might not be fair, but I'm going to say I with an asterisk of like, Mr. Merdler doesn't often come to executive committee and I feel like that should be something he's encouraged to do. Well, you're free to encourage him to do it, but at this point you're just being asked for your vote, yes, no, or abstain. You're welcome to abstain. I mean, I'm not, I'm, but we're I not mean, gonna I'm start. We're not putting comments on people individually. <laughs> that is fair. <laughs> and I, I will say I respectfully abstain just because um, a lot happens in exec that he does not participate in. Okay. Got it. Um, Martin Walpuff, uh, currently serving as chair of Law Rules Ethics, has indicated an interest in being nominated to continue in that position. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Um, Deb Travis uh, was elected recently as chair of, well, not recently, but she's been ser serving as chair of Parks and Recreation, has indicated her interest in receiving the committee's nomination to continue in that role. We interviewed her. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is that everybody? Oh. I don't want to. Omar, uh, did you vote? Yes. Hi. Um, public safety. Ed Green uh, has served as the chair of public safety committee, has indicated his interest in being nominated to continue in that role. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, Kelly Buford has served as Traffic and Transportation Committee Chair. She has indicated her interest to the committee in receiving the nomination to continue in that role. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And uh, we've only touched on this once before, but um, Julia, you are not permitted. We didn't have any discussion of the youth committee chair, but uh, you certainly can be present, but you cannot vote uh, for yourself um, or against yourself if you should have a change of heart. <laughs> um, Julie Gomez has indicated her interest in being uh, considered to continue in her role as chair of the youth committee. Um, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain with cause. All right. I may even say recusal. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, that gives us our slate. And we talked about the asterisks. Um, what else did I have on my agenda? Um, so the, the slate will be part of the report, some reference to our meetings. I will attach the summaries, the notes on the meetings to the report. I have been circulating those as we have gone along. So if people have changes to those, those notes, um, I'd appreciate it if you could send them to me. Um, what I will be doing over the next week before the scheduled meeting on June 8th at 6 p.m., well in advance of that, is to circulate a draft report to you folks for your comment. And uh, if we think that more is needed in terms of discussion in a public meeting, we can show up at 6 o'clock on June 8th. Um, so, uh, one thing, 
I wanted to mention, and then certainly we have the time to talk about other stuff, is, and this is something that we talked about at some length at the meeting of May 17th, or I should say, well, no, I think we did. So basically, um, there was a bit of a dust up this year when the board office complied or tried to comply with the EGM's directive that certain meetings of the nominating committee within the first couple of weeks should be scheduled for specific days. Specifically, the day, the evening of the meeting, of the board meeting in April, which is no problem, it's do it after the meeting. Sometimes that has not been possible. So we, the EGM was amended a few years ago to say, schedule a meeting for the very next day. And then it, the EGM says, and schedule a meeting, meeting for the sixth and seventh um, business days subsequent to that. By business day, we're meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So bottom line is the board office found it, A, difficult to cancel the meeting that we didn't need on the very next day. So I think we should make it the day after that. Um, and as far as the designating the sixth and seventh days, I think we should give the board office the flexibility to schedule the two extra committee meetings within the first 10 days, 10 business days, for any days where there isn't a conflict with a standing committee. So the, the new nominating committee, which would not be in existence at the time that notice went out, the new nominating committee will have access to two meeting days within the first 10 business days, which is basically the first two weeks, because that is a meeting. The first meeting is just electing the chair and confirming that a notice will go out to the current occupants of various positions that they need to tell the committee in five days whether they're going to seek renomination or not. The second meeting is a lot of stuff having to do with who gets interviewed, what the interview should be like, and other policy issues about notices to the board and when the when 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 uh, open the open period is for informing the committee and the like. So that's. Uh, one of the most important meetings. And I think that that was what animated the suggestion back in 2020 that the EGM be modified. I hate to be modifying it every you know few years, but the board office complained that they needed flexibility so that they weren't forced to schedule meetings that were direct conflicts with normally scheduled meetings of committees. You know, like Julia, what day does your committee normally meet each month? Third Monday. Right, so there's a certain predictability to that. People put it in their schedules early in the year when they're on this, members of these committees. So I respect that. So my suggestion is that the text of the EGM be, be changed so that the meetings be scheduled for the evening of the board meeting, the evening two days hence, and any two business days within 10 days of the board meeting at which the nominating committee was elected, which should give sufficient flexibility, especially when added to, we can add a, a proviso that the meetings of the nominating committee, if there is no other available day, can be scheduled to start at six o'clock. And again, this would just be for that one extra. And I think that should give all the safety valve that's needed, both for the committee and the board office. So that was I mentioned that at the time we discussed it on May 17th, but I wanted to reiterate it because people have <laughs> more going on in their lives. And I think about nothing but this. No, I'm kidding. Um, so any, any other thoughts on this? Uh, n not for me. I mean, I mentioned before that yeah, I felt, I felt this made sense to say I has a little more flexibility in there. So we have a window they to operate in, but, not specific days, so um, I, I'm in favor of it. But yeah, that's just that's just my thought. And it's only our recommendation to LRE that that the amendment be considered. I'll try to do it in a way that um, prints the old text and then prints the new text in the in the report, so it's clear. What's going on? Any other thoughts for 
the report. I will have a, I will I will draft a section about the um, mentorship and term limits. I'm just you. I'll say more, but that's the, the kernel. And as I said, I will plan to draft something and send it around by the middle of next week, early next week, for your comments. And then we can decide to meet or not. Let's try to decide to meet or not by what is June 8th? What date is June 8th? Thursday. Day, what day Thursday. So it's actually a week from today. So let's, I'll try to get the report circulated in enough time. But let's try to shoot for making a decision on the 6th, which is Tuesday, uh, for whether we need to meet on the 8th. And then the board can cancel the meeting. All right. Thanks. And I'll try to fix my microphone. I can't believe this. I'm glad it wasn't with a client. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. Well, is there anything else? This could be our last meeting. Is there anything else in terms of committee business or, you know, things for the future or anything that people want to bring up? Just one thing for me, just another thanks to you, Steve, for uh, for stepping up and leading us through this process. This was a lot, um, but I think well, I think it was it was smooth because uh, your knowledge of you know what we what's been done before and then kind of your ability to to guide us through each step. So I just wanted to say thanks again for um, for stepping up into that role. Agreed. You're welcome. Uh -huh. uh, off offline, I. Uh... I promised Laura that I would provide a, for want of a better word, I still live in the paper world, but <laughs> basically provide a, a group of documents that represents every communication that the nominating committee had with the board from the beginning to the end, including notices of meetings, so that the board office in the future will have a model <clears throat> for everything we do. Now, it's not going to be the same every year, but trust me, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to work from something that's 90% the same than to sort of start writing from scratch. So whoever becomes part of the nominating committee in June 2024, I hope, because I can't do this a fifth year. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, to Julia's point earlier, I mean, obviously other people should do it. Um, so, I mean, you know, and this to, to, it refers to Omar as well. Omar, how many years have you been on the nominating committee? Enough years. Omar's, he's playing oh my it cool. God. Sorry, I'm sorry. I, I keep, I'm on my cell phone. So I keep trying to find him. <laughs> no more. I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> that many. <laughs> not many. I but nope, not going to happen. Uh, okay, well, uh, if there's no other business, uh, we can adjourn. Uh, and uh, you shall be hearing from me with a draft report. And I ask you, please, please, please promptly get back to me with any changes or additions and your view as to whether we need a meeting on the 8th. So, great well, to hear Bill. from you. You got it. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for Appreciate your service. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good evening, everybody. All right. Bye. Too. Enjoy Florida, Chris. Bye. Right. Right. Nice to season today. I guess recording stopped, right, Julia? It'll stop when I log off. We're fine. Okay. Got it. Thanks.